Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to look at a problem that involves a lot of geometry. Um, we don't do enough stuff with a lot of geometry in our curriculum, I think. I think. Um, I think that's just because it makes things long and drawn out because you have to do a lot of thinking. Um, but really the geometry is how we put the real world into mathematics. Uh, really, if we want to understand how to do that, we have to put, you know, look at the geometry of the um, situation. Um, and that's part of the reason why I have you, have you write out the vectors in those type B problems, and I think I do so in the type A problems as well, uh, is just because the vectors are one way of getting all of that um, geometry together. So what I'd like to look at is this. I'd like to look at a tetrahedron, um, but really what it is is it's going to be three dipoles um, that make up these three um, these three legs of the tetrahedron. Okay? And um, so each one of these uh, physical dipoles is going to is going to have one end on this bottom face and one end at this top corner here. So remember a tetrahedron, it, this is a regular polygon, and it has four sides that are all equilateral triangles. Um, and so each one of these will have say Q minus Q, let's say, um, at the bottom and it will have a plus 3q each one will have each one will have a plus q so we'll have plus 3q at the top here okay so this is sort of the physical situation this is the geometrical situation this is still an idealized um, problem I don't know that you'd ever actually use it but it does um, it does have some idea or does have some um, physical idea behind it is this tetrahedron. I actually was um, trying to model some molecules this way and it turns out that it does, doesn't work very well for um, various reasons, mostly because the charge doesn't end up at the edges of a of a um, of a molecule, you, you know, because it's being shared by the bonds between, say, um, different atoms, right? So the mean charge is somewhere in the middle all the time. So it really doesn't work very well as that kind of model. But it is the first model that would come to mind, or at least was the first model that came to mind when I decided to try to do that, right? So um, anyways, let's start writing this out. So we've got a tetrahedron. made of dipoles uh, so their end charges are um, are Q and their lengths are A so we'll just call that A and we'd like to find uh, the dipole moment. And that's P. And in the, in the end what I'm going to do is I'm going to find it two different ways, show you that they're the same, and um, basically say, well, this first one it's easy, this last one it's not so easy. Um, so the concept behind this would be the dipole moment. Um, the equation for your dipole moment, as you'll recall, is uh, P, which is a vector, is equal to um, the charge at each end, so Q, Q. Uh, times the vector a, so that's the vector from here to there. Um, so this is sort of a radius vector. So yeah, so let's just use that um, to the positive charge from the negative charge. 
Uh, let's see. So we want a setup. Um, probably what we'll do is we'll place. Uh, so if we draw it out here, we'll place um, two of these charges here in the along the y-axis, right? So we'll have one Q here at. Um, at minus a over two, and then we'll have one way over here at a over two, uh, both along the y-axis. Um, and then we can put another one in the positive x-axis here, um, and we'll have to figure out that point. That's gonna be a fairly easy point to figure out. Um, so, uh, let's see, one edge, on y axis um, and we have uh, one point on the x axis and um, all the negative charges, so these will all be negative charges I'll call this guy point B Got negative charges um, in the XY plane. Okay, uh, and this is going to say everything except that the uh, top point, which will be right here with the three Q, um, which will say has some height C. Uh, this guy is um, this guy is in the positive z um, or is in the positive z half plane. So the last point, which is the plus three q, is in uh, positive z uh, half space. That's a half space. Excuse me. All right. So that's our setup, that's our drawing, okay? So now we're going to get to the um, complex part here. <coughs> and that's going to be finding our vectors, okay? So um, these two points here are going to be easy, right? So, um, so we've got negative points at um, x1, let's have this be x1, and that's equal to a over two in the y hat direction. Uh, we have an x2, right? That's equal to um, minus a over two in the y hat direction, this guy here. And then we have an x3, and we said that's at a b, right? B's not a real sort of number though, right? So, um, so we're going to have to go to our geometry to figure all this sort of stuff out. Um, so let's do a little bit of geometry. Uh, let's see how much room. I mean, we, we need some room to start working on this. So let's come over here and um, draw our equilateral tri triangle in the xy plane. Um, so this is going to be in, this is going to be the x-axis. So this is actually something to be careful of. I'm looking at this up this way. So I'm looking at it in the left-hand coordinate system. Um, so don't get confused because of that. Everything will work fine for what we're doing because we're just looking at the um, geometry. Okay, so <clears throat> what we'd like to find here is this point first, all right? So we know this this point here is A, this point here is A over 2, this is a hypotenuse. Um, so this guy here, which is B, right, this is our B. Um, is equal to the square root of a squared minus 
a over 2 squared, which is just the square root of 3 quarters times a, which is your square root of 3 over 2a, um, which is something that you may have just known. It's completely possible that you know that just from doing uh, doing enough stuff with vectors. Um, so that's just basic trigonometry, really. Um, uh, and, but hey, it's all good. So we have the square root of 3 over 2 in the x hat direction. OK, so those are our negative points. And then our positive points are all at the same position. OK. So now we have to find x4. And let's take a look at this guy. So where is x4? x4 is way up here. It's somewhere in oh, at the center here. So we, we know already that y is 0. So for x4, right, um, let's see, uh, y component is 0. So, so we already know that just by this. Now we have to find where this point is. This point is the center of this triangle. Okay, which means that it's where this line meets that line meets that line. Uh, we only need two of those lines because if we find the place where these two meet, we automatically find this other place where this one meets. Um, so this guy, just like this guy, goes from one point, bisects this line at a perpendicular spot. Uh, any reason, the reason why it doesn't look like it's perpendicular here is this thing I drew is isosceles, but not, or almost isosceles, but not very near to being equilateral. So, <clears throat> so let's give, give this a go. We have to find that point. Now you might know it. Um, I know that I don't know it off the top of my head and uh, at least since I started teaching e &M, I've had to do it at least once a semester to find that point. So um, what we have to do is find some way to find that point. Um, so if we already know how to characterize this line, this line's easy, right? We just say um, y is equal to 0 along that line. Uh, what we want to do is find a way to characterize this line. And to do that, we actually have to, you know, find um, this point. So in, we have to characterize this line first to find the center point, and then characterize that line here to find the place where um, y is equal to zero. Sounds fun, doesn't it? I, I know. I mean, you might want to pause this and try it yourself and have a have a great time because it is a great time. It's going to be fun. So first of all, we want to find this line. So what we're doing is, what we'll say is, okay, let's construct our line uh, such that, um, you know, some point on that line, uh, P, is equal to, um, this guy was x3, so it's some at mu, some constant times x3 plus 1 minus mu, um, times this guy who is x1, right? And in fact, for this particular case, mu is going to be 1 half, so it's because we want to be right in the middle. Very simple. So this is a way to write a line, is you take two points and you have some, um, some, variable, uh, some variable, some parameter mu, and change that between those two points, and you get a line along, the, along there. Um, in this case, we know that we want the center, that mu is 1 half, so we can just write that. And then just multiply these out and add. Well, this is pretty easy, because x3 is just um, the square root of 3 over 2 times 1 half, so we have the square root of 3 over 4x, and x1 here is um, just a over 4y hat, okay? So that's, um, 
That's our point P here. Uh, but we really care about right now is finding this point here, right? So um, how do we do that? Well, we can do it the same way, right? Only this time we won't be able to be so blasé about um, just saying this is one half. We can't just appeal to any sort of symmetries involved. We just have to do the work. Um, so that um, central point, which I can't call C, I'll have to call S, uh, he's going to be equal to um, lambda times, um, uh, what did we call this guy, P, plus 1 minus lambda times uh, x2, right? So um, if lambda is equal to 1, then we're going to be here. If lambda is equal to 0, we're going to be here. And anywhere in between, we're at, we move along that line. Um, so that means that we take uh, this point here, which is the square root of 3 over 4. Um, now there should be an a here, excuse me. Um, a lambda x hat plus a lambda over 4 y hat, right? And we add in um, a lambda over 2 uh, y hat again, or, and it's a minus, right? And um, in this case, we have two equations and two unknowns, right? We want to we want to find this uh, lambda. Um, and when we find that lambda, we'll be able to find our actual point. Um, one thing we know is that y is equal to z zero. Uh oh, I forgot the um, this is times one minus lambda. Excuse me. One minus lambda times a over two y hat. And um, and so y is the y component is equal to zero up here. So. Uh, we have a over 4 times lambda um, minus a over 2 plus a over um, 2 times lambda is equal to 0. So these a's all go away, right? And we actually have one half of this and just that. So. Um, we, we look at this and we end up with, um, let's see, 3 quarters lambda is equal to, um, 1 quarter, I thought. Let me look at this again. 3 quarters lambda, <clears throat> I may have parameterized this differently than I did previously. So this guy plus that guy. That's one half, actually. Okay, so um, we have three quarters lambda is equal to one half. Um, so now I have to come in and uh, find lambda, and that comes to two thirds. All right, so that means our um, position here, S is going to equal, um, what, the square root of 3 over 4 times 2 thirds times a in the x hat direction, uh, which leaves us with a over 2 root 3 in the x hat direction. So this that's this point here um, below, below our uh, point. We also need to find this point up here which means we have just a little more geometry to do, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at actually this um, triangle and try to find this and find this side. And the reason why we're going to use, um, no, let's move that down. So we want to look at this triangle here. So if I come out across here along this line to a over 2 and take this um, this side, I can find this just with some trigonometry because that's, um, that's this uh, right triangle. So this number we found here is 
you know, basically this part right here, this distance here. Um, we want to be able to, we want to, we need to find this distance here. That's the same as this distance here, um, which is the remainder of this entire, um, this entire uh, perpendicular thingamabobber uh, that we have between this point and, and this um, side. So, um, basically we need to find this little guy here, um, and that distance is, I don't know, let's call it Q, right, which is equal to, uh, what, we had, what do we have, the square root of 3 over 2, which is this entire length, right, that entire length, minus um, the leftover bits, okay, that's times A, which is A over 2 root 3, right? Um, what we have to do to finish this out is multiply root 3 by both sides, so we have 2 root 3 um, times, or 1 over 2 root 3 times 3 minus 1, which is 2, um, which means that we multiply that by A, which means that this is just A over root 3. Okay, so this, that's this um, distance here. Now we want to come over here and say, okay, we've got this A over root 3. Um, I've got uh, this, which is A, right? So now I want to find um, that height there. So that's our height H, and that is... What should we say? Uh, that's the square root of a squared minus a over root 3 squared, which is just going to equal um, the square root of 2 over 3 times a. Okay, and so that's the z component. So uh, to find this x4, right, we have our x component and we have our z component. So we just write a over 2 root 3 x hat plus um, the square root of 2 over 3 a z hat and there's no y hat component again because that's how I set everything up in the setup so I'd have as easy a time as possible to do this. So those are, are our vectors that locate the three import, important positions in space for this. Um, what we need to do now is figure out what these three vectors are here, right? So these, these three a plus minus vectors and then find our dipole moments and then we can do things, okay? Um, so think about that for a second, and then I'll come back a little bit later, and we'll do a little bit of that, okay? So I'll see you in a second. Bye now. Okay, so I've put everything here that I think is really important, and now we can um, go ahead and go to the next phase, which is actually finding um, this dipole moment. Like I said, I'm going to do this two ways. So down here I'd like to do it the first and most simple way, okay? And um, basically to do that I'm going to um, assume that assume that the charges are at the center of the like charges. Okay, so that's my that's my strategy. Uh, that basically means that the um, all the positive charges are right here, which is what we're going to assume anyway. So we've got plus 3q here. And then we're going to assume that right here at the center of this triangle we have minus 3q, right? So that means we basically have a dipole that's from the bottom here to the top here of this distance here, this height. So, so if we do that, then um, then we just use uh, 
what p is equal to q a um, from minus two plus so that we say th this q here is actually three q right um, and this a here is this part here we're just using this z component the height of the tetrahedron uh, which is the square root of 2 over 3 times um, a, which means we have um, the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, which is 6, qa, the a. So we have basically um, the square root of 6 times uh, the individual sizes of these things, all right? Which makes sense, that's more than twice and less than three times. So that's very simple, but I mean, do you believe me, right? Do you believe me that that is the correct answer? Well, of course you believe me, because I mean, you're very trusting, right? But, you know, maybe you should try it out um, some more complicated way, right? So we can say, okay, what I could do is I could um, find these three dipole moments and just add them up, right? I mean, that's a perfectly fine way to do it. That would um, be equivalent to the equivalent to you know adding R and Q, R's and Q's for each point. Um, so let's let's go ahead and do that. I think that's completely um, reasonable. Um, that means we have to find uh, these A41, uh, A42, and A43, so A from 3 to 4, and so forth, right? So A from 3 to 4 is the hard one, so let's do the hard one. Um, so that means we have 4 a2 over 2 root 3 x hat minus the square root of 2 thirds a y hat minus this x3 which is the square root of 3 over 2 well, this is z hat excuse me um, square root of 3 over 2 uh, x hat, and we do all that together, we add um, a, right? Uh, we do all that together, we take um, 1 over 2 root 3 minus the square root of 3 over 2, right? Um, in the times a in the x hat direction and um, this is a plus we have a square root of 2 over 3 a in the z hat direction that's what I get for drawing a box here right through that plus sign um, so uh, this thing um, so we're, we're going to expect that to be negative right uh, this thing is, okay, we do this 3 here, we get um, minus uh, 2 over 2 root 3 times A in the x hat direction minus, um, or minus uh, the it's a plus, excuse me, where did that go, plus, plus the square root of 2 over 3 a in the z hat direction, okay, so that's the hard one, the easy ones, well, these are just y's, these don't have y's, so we have um, uh, a over 2 root 3 x, a over 2 root 3 in the x hat direction, um, minus this, which is minus a minus, so plus a over 2 uh, y hat um, plus two, square root of 2 root 3, or square root of 2 
over 3a z hat and we just flip the sign here for our um, final uh, a hat so we get all these together and um, we're ready to find P for each one. Now P for each one of these is just Q times whatever it is. So P41, I'm just calling P1, um, is Q times A41 and so forth and so on. So we can just add these A's up. So P being equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to Q times A41 plus A42 plus A43, right? And that's equal to, uh, let's add up the X's, um, X hat times A over 2 root 3 plus A over 2 root 3 minus 2a over 2 root 3. And you thought I was just forgetting to cancel those out, didn't you? I'm, yeah, you should trust me more. You need to trust me more. We were just talking about trust, and we said you trusted me, and then you stopped trusting me. No, you should. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm very sad now. Um, so these guys all cancel out here, right? And then these guys cancel out in the y direction. There's no y component here. And finally, we have the square root of two-thirds a plus the square root of two-thirds a plus the square root of two-thirds a. And this is something we also like to refer to as three times the square root of two-thirds a, right? And then this stuff is all multiplied by q, right? So we do this, we end up with the same thing, right? The square root of 6 times a times q, um, or vice versa. So we get the same result, um, which is good. We always like to get the same result when we do when we uh, make some uh, sort of different assumptions. Um, it works out because this is nice and symmetric about the point here, and it's rotationally symmetric. Um, but we don't really have to get into those symmetry details. We just did it, and we're pretty sure that it's right. Uh, so there you have a reasonably complex fun um, problem involving some geometry, showing you how to write vectors, how to play with vectors, and do other things that I know you really, really love to do. Okay? So I will um, see you in class. Bye now.